It was good, YouTube. So guys, hope everybody is doing well. Uh, I want to get right to the point with this video here because some of you have been messaging me lately asking me, hey man, you said you were going to do this video. When are you going to do it? So here it is. Um, to trade in or not to trade in, that is the question. Okay, uh, a lot of us uh, are confronted with this when we have an existing vehicle and we want to get rid of it and get a different vehicle, a new vehicle. Um, should we trade in or should we do a private sale? Now, statistically, the answer is pretty clear. Most people do a trade in, right? Because it's convenient, it's fast, um, and you can get financing right there. If you've got, if you owe money on the car, uh, no problem, right? Um, it's very convenient for people to do that. However, a private sale, as is commonly known, does actually wind up saving you some money because you could fetch more for a car for yourself if you sell it retail than if you trade it in for less than retail to a dealership who then is going to turn around and sell it for retail, right? So it's basically cutting out the middleman uh, when you do a private sale. However, however, there are other factors that go into this that are really, really important, guys. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take a look at some examples. We're going to talk about all the different factors that go into this. Um, and hopefully, by the end of this short video, you will have a pretty good sense about how you should approach this question the next time you need to. Should I trade in or should I do the private sale? So let's get on into it here, okay? All right, guys, first things first. Um, the question here about trade in versus doing a private sale is really. For most people, it comes down to it's really a question about their preferences, their personal situation. Okay, uh, private sale versus a trade-in basically means what do I value more: saving money or having the convenience of just being able to walk away from my old car. It is as simple as that. Now, um, what complicates it is for most people when they actually think about it. Um, there are a number of factors that that make it um, uh, that make certain options uh, more attractive than others. Uh, for example, um, if you're looking at and you know we're Mopar here, so we're going to keep it Mopar. Let's suppose you've got yourself you know a a Scat Pack, you know a used Scat Pack. It's a few, few uh, a few years old. It's got reasonable miles on it. And in your particular market in your area, you see, hey man, use these things are going for around thirty-five thousand dollars or so. Right? Um, and you also know because you've gone to some dealerships and talked turkey a little bit that uh, if you were to trade in your car, um, the best you'd be able to get is about thirty-two thousand. Okay. So basically, the difference between doing the trade-in and doing a private sale for this type of car in the mid thirties means about 10% of that total value of the car is what your margin is. Okay, so again, a difference of about $3,000 on a $30,000 vehicle, approximately, right? Now, for different types of vehicles, the, the margin could be much larger, you know, especially if you've got a, a real high-end vehicle um, where you really can fetch a lot from the right person. However, you're going to, you're probably not going to get that many people to go out and check out your car if you're selling it privately, right? If it's really high end, right? Because um, most people aren't buying $100,000 cars. On the other end, too, if you're talking about, say, under $30,000 or under $20,000, um, it may be pretty easy for you to sell the car because there's lots of people looking to buy cars at that price point range. But you uh, are not, you're, maybe you're not going to, you know, that, that, that margin for you is, is going to be smaller. Okay, because um, you're just talking about percentages of the vehicle and so on and so forth. Again, assuming that you are dealing with market prices and that your trading in is is fairly aggressive on your part, so you're getting the best deal possible you could get from the dealership. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so um, that's the first factor here is the price point of the vehicle. Okay, the next factor that's really important is the tax rate of the state that you're going to be buying in. Now, most states, I think 47 of them, maybe 46 of them, have a state, a state sales tax that you have to buy whenever you're purchasing a new vehicle, new or used, right? Whenever you're buying a vehicle uh, from a dealership, you must be paying some type of sales tax in you know 46 or 47 states. And even then, some of these states that don't have a state sales tax, you have to pay either county, and or municipal taxes. So, you know, most states, again, you're paying some kind of tax. 
Um, why is in, in just to show you, give you an example of what the range is, let's say on some end where, you know, you're not paying any tax, right, on one end. Um, on the high end in, say, like Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the rate there, when you add up state, local, county, or whatever, comes to 8%. State here like North Carolina, where I live, where it's just state tax, it's 3%. A state like Maryland or uh, many uh, several others is like 6%, okay? Um, now, why is that important? Well, that is important, guys, because of the fact that most states offer an incentive on your taxes if you trade in a vehicle as opposed to just, you know, paying cash or putting a bet down, payment down or what have you, okay? And uh, basically the way it works is this, as a quick example. Um, let's suppose you want to buy a $50,000 car. You want to trade in a $30,000 car. Well, in most states, um, the state will recognize that $30,000 trade-in as essentially a tax, deduct, a tax deduction, okay? So basically what it means is instead of having to pay tax on that full 50 grand, you subtract 30 grand for the trade-in and you're only having to pay sales tax on 20,000 of it. As opposed to if you were doing a private sale and we're not trading anything in, uh, you may have a nice big down payment to put down on the car, but you are not going to be able to take advantage of that tax savings, okay? And that tax savings is really important because um, it will cut into that margin of profit that you thought you were getting by doing in uh, by doing the private sale. So let's have a look here, guys. I got my trusty uh, laptop here. Okay, so in this example, this real life example, and basically I got a real form here uh, that dealerships use. And what I did here is I just plugged in some some pretty uh, uh, some some real numbers that I found as well. And in this case, what we're looking here again, same type of uh, vehicle that I mentioned before, uh, private sale, about thirty-five thousand dollars you could get for it. Trade in, best case scenario from a dealership is thirty-two thousand dollars. Okay, they don't owe any money on the car, and we are here in North Carolina where our tax rate is three percent. Okay, so let's suppose the uh, their asking price for the vehicle is forty-eight nine. You got some incentives, a little haggling, whatever, gets you at 48.2, right? Pretty modest, but that's what we're doing here. Um, your trade-in is 32 grand, right? Which means your tax liability is not on the 48.2, but on the difference, on the 16.2, which means here in North Carolina, your sales tax on that vehicle is $507.21. Now let's take a look if you did the private sale over here. Again, same numbers, right? 48.2. Oh, he's putting 35 down because he did a private sale. However, that doesn't really matter in terms of the taxes because guess what? He's not doing any trade-in, right? Nothing, which means he's paying full tax or tax on the full 48.2, which is here in North Carolina, 1448, as opposed to 50721, which is a difference of about, what is it, $940 or so. Okay, that means here for the trade-in, ultimately after taxes, tags, all that good stuff, you've got 17.5 out the door versus 15.4 versus uh, for the uh, private sale. Now, obviously, um, you've got the um, uh, the private sale uh, winning here, um, you know, pretty pretty well. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we're talking, uh, you know, uh, more than, you know, a little over two grand here in savings. However, remember, we started thinking that we were going to save $3,000, right? And we're not saving $3,000. Once you factor in the, uh, the taxes, it actually winds up cutting into your margin, you know, pretty substantially. And again, if you were, you know, counting on using that $1,000 for something else, um, you know, you, you'd be a little disappointed. Now let's take a look at a different state, all right? Let's see how this really can play out. We're going to look here at the state of Maryland, which has a tax rate of 6%. Everything else here is the same, guys, okay? 32 trade-in, 35 private sales, same price for the vehicle, same tax liability in terms of 16.2. However, being that it's a higher tax rate, it's $1,017.42, right? Same thing, identical over here that we saw in North Carolina, except, whoa, look at that tax. Almost three grand, right? About $2,900 in taxes 
versus a thousand dollars and some change in Maryland. Okay, so almost two thousand dollars more in taxes that cuts into that three thousand dollar margin that you thought you had, which means, yeah, okay, you're saving twelve hundred dollars at the end of the day, but it's not that three grand that you thought that you were going to save. Now, again, guys, getting back to、um, This question, and you can plug in, you know, you plug in your different numbers here and stuff, and you know, you'll see how much variation you can have, especially when you look at different states, you know. And again, if you are, you know, in a state that's got a lot of taxes, high taxes, and you're doing a private sale, the incentives really not are not on your side. It's actually, you know, it's it's not necessarily going to cost you more, but you know. The convenience of the trade-in becomes much, much cheaper、um, because of the margin of, of any any profit that you'd have on your end、uh, really gets、uh, significantly diminished、um, as you're in a high-tax state. So,、um, the question then here becomes:、um, after you look at taxes, is how much is the inconvenience of doing a private sale worth to you? All right. Um, for if you wind up at the end of the day, only saving yourself a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars by doing a private sale,、um, was it worth it for you to try and sell your car privately?、Um, keeping in mind that it might actually take you quite a while to sell the car. Now, if you can turn around and sell it real fast, your buddy's going to buy it for you. That's one thing. That's not the case for most people, right? Most people they put them on eBay, they're doing on pro, you know, social media. They put them in the newspaper,、um, they put them on Car Gurus and Auto Trader and so on and so forth, and they they begin what can be a very long process of. Oops, let me shut this off. Very long process of trying to sell that vehicle, so.、Um, And that can be an issue for you、uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, you know, if you need to sell the car quick, if it's if you can't afford the car you have now, the payments are too high, or whatever it is, or you've got no use for it, you know, you got a baby on the way, you got to trade, you got to you got to get that minivan or that that Durango blacktop, you know, to roll that kid around. You can't be banging around in that little Mazda anymore, whatever your situation is.、Um, you have to do a quick transaction. Private sale is guaranteed to be slower than a trade-in. All right,、um, so that's a big issue, especially if you are making payments on that current car. You know, trying to sell the car while you're making payments, you are paying money each month to keep that car. Right, so keep that in mind as well. That's that's also another important factor.、Um, the process of selling a car. I don't know if any you know. You're watching this. If you've done it, you know. Hey, sometimes it can go easy. Sometimes not so easy. You know, especially this day and age with the internet and everything else. Man, it's a bit of a different world. You know, I remember back in the day. You know, selling an old Mazda I had for a thousand bucks, putting it in the paper, and that was a pain in the ass. Just dealing with all the people calling me up, trying to haggle with you over the price of the car. They haven't even seen it yet. I remember I had one guy who told me, "Hey, man, yeah, thousand dollars. How about this? I'll come down there. I'm going to give you six hundred dollars." I'm gonna take the car, and then you know a week or two, you know a couple weeks later, you know we'll 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 pay you back. We'll find we'll find a way to pay the rest of it.、And、I'm like absolutely not, absolutely not. Are you out of your mind? No, no sir. And he thought I was being the jerk、uh, for not wanting to get his little brother into their his first car. He made a mistake. I, the ad did not say、uh, this was to help somebody get in their first car. The, the ad said thousand bucks for this Honda. Take it take it as is. Anyway, you have to deal with that kind of stuff. You know, you get deal with people coming to see the car,、um, and they they're trying to haggle with you on the price, right? Or they show up late, right? They got cash for the car, oh, but I'm five hundred dollars short. Well, now you're in a position, right, where you have to make a decision.、Um, you have to deal with、um, waiting for people. Oh yeah, I'll come look at the car. You know, you're waiting all day. They don't show. Or they show up late. There goes your whole afternoon. Other things you could be doing. You could be at work and making money. Whatever it is that you do with your time, right?、Um, you got to deal with trolls online now. You know people who are just harassing you for no reason. They got nothing better to do with themselves. And then、um, also shady people. You know if you're selling your car, you don't know who's showing up to your house. You don't know anything. I mean they're going on the test drive with your car. <laughs> you know I mean 
it's just, it's understandable. Um, yes, it will save you money. It most likely will save you some money to do all that, but you have a lot to deal with um, versus just trading it in and being done with it, you know, where you just have to sign these couple little places, you know, after you, after you agree on a price, you sign your initial couple places, here you go, you clean the crap out of your car, you give them the keys, and you're done. They deal with the bank, they pay off the loan if you owe anything on it, they are done. They take care of the registration change for you, they, you are done. Um, so uh, it's understandable to see why most people opt for that, okay? And again, it comes down to this question is, what is more important to you, saving money, versus the convenience of doing the trade-in. Um, so it really, really depends, guys, on, on a number of factors here. It's not just a simple black and white, one-size-fits-all answer for everybody, uh, because saving money for some people isn't going to, you know, the end of the day, when you think about everything that you got to do, um, it may not be worth it to you. Okay, so guys, here are the top top takeaways. Okay. The most important stuff that I hope you are taking away from this little video here, uh, selling privately and quickly will usually save you money, um, versus trading in your car. Again, quickly being a really important term here, because if you're sitting on the car for months and months and just go on car gurus, go on auto trader guys, see people who are privately selling the car, see how long they've been there and see if there have been any price drops. And sometimes you'll see that somebody put a, you know, top dollar price on the car and they weren't able to fetch that. Now they're sitting on it. And if they're still making car payments on it, man, they're just, they're just throwing money out the window, right? Number two takeaway, um, the margins of how much money you would make doing a private sale versus a trade-in depends on a number of things. It depends on if the state you're buying in has got a tax incentive. It depends on what is the sales tax rate um, in that state, okay? And really the rules here are if there are no sales tax or very low sales tax, you have more incentive to do a private sale. Um, if you have high sales tax, you have less incentive to do a private sale because that means you know you're going to have to pay that tax. You don't get that incentive of the trade-in. It's going to eat into that margin that you were hoping to have, right? And of course, how long does it take you to sell your car um, if that's important to you? And again, it may not be important to you. You may have a car sitting in the garage that you're not using. You want to get rid of it, and you don't care whether it takes you six days or six months to get rid of it. You know, whatever. Um, most people though, they're selling cars that they currently are using because they need to use, you know, they need another daily driver. You know, that's what this, the situation is for most people. So the major takeaway number three is, uh, if you're trading in, never accept the dealership's first offer to you. Now I kind of mentioned this briefly before, we're going to dig into it now. When you go in, you sit down, you start talking turkey with any dealership, they're going to give you the numbers. Their first offer is always going to be most favorable to them. You always need to do your homework. You never want to come off unreasonable, but you always want to push back, especially when it comes to your trade-in. Now, if you've got positive equity on the car, which means that you owe less on the car than what it's worth, right? Most people are willing to be pretty forgiving because they're going, well, you know, I don't owe anything on the car anyway. And, you know, it's worth $10,000. It knocks $10,000 off the asking price. Hey, you know, I'm making that. You can do better for yourself. Don't just, don't just give up that easily. Um, in most cases, you can, you know, work it up a bit. You may be able to get $500 more. You may be able to get $2,500 more, depending on your car and what the situation is. Um, however, keep in mind that things do have a way of balancing out, guys, okay? And um, this is sort of a really important last point that I want to make here on this is that, you know, if you go in, you want to buy a car and you see there's an internet advertised price that's rock bottom and it's great, great price. You go in there, you may even be able to knock off a little bit more off that price with your fine negotiating skills. However, when it comes to your trade-in, they're going to go, okay, we gave you a really great price on this car. They're going to try to make up for it a little bit. <laughs> they got to think about their margins on their end. And it may be really, really difficult for you to, um, to um, get a good offer on that trade-in. Again, keeping things all within reason. You know, and there are a lot of people who go to dealerships and they expect to have their cake and eat it too. 
Now, you need to go in there. You need to be your, the strongest advocate possible for yourself, but you've got to be reasonable. You know, and I know there's, I have one video on my channel here has been getting a lot of views lately and a lot of comments because I embellished quite a bit in the video a little bit. I wasn't really interested in this car that I was looking at in this video. And I was kind of like, well, they do this, and this, and this, and this, and this, you know, whatever, man, you know, I'll think about it, you know, and people were like, what? I hate people like you, man. And, and, you know, the truth is though, that in real life, man, you know, you do need to be reasonable. You need to be firm, but fair. You need to realize that the dealership's got to make some money on their end um, and you want the best deal for yourself. So you find some common ground there. So anyway, guys, getting back to that original question, to trade in or not to trade in, it's not as simple as you think. Um, it, it really depends on the car and the market and the margins um, and also uh, depends on things like sales tax and tax incentives and all these other things. So take all this stuff formulate it, put your own numbers in to that formula and make the best decision possible for you and your family. All right, guys, that's it. Until next time. Later.